An urgent warning. After I read Val's post about her son Jamie, who is like a guardian angel warning her of what is coming, it brought back memories of the afternoon that I almost lost my son who was five years of age. He is fourteen now and he still remembers that Saturday afternoon, before I get to it, I would like to share with you an experience that I had nine months prior. That year was an awful year for us because my mother-in-law had passed and my father-in-law became very difficult and he caused my husband so much pain and grief the day that my mother-in-law passed, I was at the hospital sitting at her feet while my husband took his father home so he could make some phone calls. My mother-in-law had been in a coma for about 48 hours and it was just her and me in the room. I was very tired because I had not slept much all week, so I sat at her feet and I closed my eyes. I could hear the nurses walking through the hall and talking. I felt a presence, someone approaching, and I could feel a light movement of air. I opened my eyes and I didn't see anything so I closed my eyes again. The next thing I felt was a soft, warm face touch my face and kiss me on the cheek and right there and then I knew that it was my mother-in-law. I loved her very much and she loved me as well. She didn't have any daughters and she always told me that I was like a daughter to her. She had hugged me and kissed me many times and she had the softest skin. I opened my eyes and there was nothing in front of me. She was still in a coma state but I was 100% sure that it was her. Now, I have heard many stories of people being touched by spirits with ice-cold hands but in my case she was warm. I received many warnings from my mother-in-law in dreams, and in my dream she warned me of what was to come with my father-in-law and she was 100% on the money but back to my son. It was a hot Saturday afternoon in July. My husband, myself, my daughter and son went to Baskin Robbins for ice cream. Baskin Robbins is located in a plaza with a large parking lot, and in a section of the lot there are a few picnic tables and chairs. Beside the front door there were two chairs and a young couple was sitting there. Dot and my husband and son had to use the washroom so I ordered our ice cream and went outside to grab a table for us. My daughter followed me and we found our table. I sat at the table with my back to the ice cream parlor. This is when I heard a voice inside of me telling me to sit facing the ice cream parlor. I hesitated, but again I heard the voice urging me to change my seat, face the store and keep my eyes on the door. So I did and a few seconds later in my peripheral vision I see a sporty car speeding down the parking lot coming towards the ice cream place like a bat out of hell. Then I see my son alone running towards the front door, now, my son at that stage in his development, loved to run and bolt. I stood up and all that I could do was scream the longest, blood-curling scream I could muster. My son looked at me and stopped mere inches from this speeding car. The young woman sitting outside stood up and yelled, Holy S.H. T., that was close. She had her back turned while she was talking to her boyfriend and she didn't see my son running out. The young man driving the car didn't even stop or notice because he was using his cell phone. What happened was, after my son finished using the toilet, my husband told him to wait in the ice cream parlor while he did his thing but the boy wouldn't have any of it. My husband was in the ice cream place walking towards the glass exterior door when this happened so he couldn't see the speeding C-A-R-dot-A-T that moment I started shaking, I threw my ice cream out because I lost my appetite. Do you know when you're cold and your teeth chatter? That was me in the middle of a hot summer day, shaking and teeth chattering. I felt this deep primal fear, could barely walk. We went home and I had to get in bed to warm up and calm down. This went on for a whole week that I do wonder who was watching over us. If it wasn't for that warning, I would have lost my son that day. I thank God for sparing my boy's life and even today when we talked about it, I get goosebumps and that primal fear comes to the surface that I have experienced a few other times when that same voice warned me that my life was in danger. When I was a child I could sense a person's true character and I was fearful of a few people. One of these people was an adult male that was found out to be a pedophile many years later. He never approached me in any sexual way. In fact, he was very nice to me but I sensed something evil in him even though I was only 8 or 9 years of age, 
being able to read people scared me as a child and I learned to repress, ignore or deny it. But there has been a few times when the voice or warning became so loud or urgent that I had to pay attention and listen. My son is the same way, he is very sensitive he can sense a person's true nature and their true intentions. I am encouraging him to listen to his gut feeling or instinct and to trust it.